right, well, I'm going to be talking to you today, and, and I'm going to share something that, that God kind of kind of showed me, and, and uh, so I'm, I want to share it with you. I know, how many of you know when God shows you something, really just lightens it up? Sometimes it's for you, but sometimes it's it's for others as well, right? Right, right. amen. So, so um, anyway, it, it's a challenging word, because I'm going to put you to a challenge, Okay. So, I, not a challenge, I'm going to step on your toes. It's a challenge, I'm going to put you to a challenge. <laughs> so, so, how many of you, like, um, and she would just be mortified if she knew I was saying this, nobody tell her. Larissa's struggling in a couple subjects in school, okay? And so, I always tell her, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And, you know, and I'm like, and if... You know, when you're in class and, and, you know, you learn something new and if you take it home and you practice it and, and you really try to try to go over it, that's what you're going to get out of it. And, you know, and, but if you just go in there and sit and listen and don't apply anything to it, nothing's going to come out of it. So that's what we're going to talk about, applying the word in your life, not just the uh, hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And, and even more so, more so than that, but just not just coming in and soaking up the word. And you should always be changed when you leave, when you leave the building. After you've been in the presence of God and after you've, you've learned, heard the rhema word, it, it should change you. Like if you can't remember what Pastor Brian talked about last Sunday, <laughs> then, then you, didn't, you didn't absorb it. You didn't put it, put it into practice. Everybody think that's fair to say, Amen. you know, so um, I, I always sometimes I get I get aggravated with my kids because I'm like, what do you learn in children's church? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're, or they're like, well, there's this guy and, you know, and so so I know they didn't listen. You know, they didn't they didn't put it in. And how many of you know right now in the last days, we more so than ever need to listen because you know, we are in the last days, and and I'm getting way ahead of myself here, but we are in the last days, and the word that comes forth um, every Sunday from your pastor is rhema word. It's a word that you need for the week, and and we just we just can't just hear it and not apply it to our lives, and so that's what I want to talk to you about today. So sound good, everybody? I mean, it's hot. I'm like sweltering. I, I'm going to turn the heat down here. I meant to do that when I came up. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It's one of these old-fashioned thermostats. You gotta crank and crank and crank. All right. Are you so, sure it's not a timer? Uh, Are you sure it's not a timer? <laughs> no, it's old-fashioned. <laughs> All right. We're going to start out in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're actually going to go through this, this whole chapter. It's not a long one. It's not like Psalms... Uh, 119 <laughs> but but we're gonna we're gonna go through through this whole chapter and we're gonna break it down uh, verse by verse verse by verse and and it's talking about the end times it's talking about the last days and it's talking about the the people that you're gonna come across in the last days and and it and it does talk about what we just talked about just being listeners and not applying it to your life so let's start out uh, we're in second Timothy chapter 3. Chapter 3. Everybody got me a second Timothy chapter 3? Tell me if you need me to hold, because I will. <laughs> okay, we do have it up front too if you need it. But 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. How many of you think? Right now we're kind of in perilous times, right? Right? But that's not what I want to focus about because God wins and when you're in Christ, they're, they're not perilous. You know, But to those not in Christ, they are perilous times. And in verse 2, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. And unholy means, you know, that sinful, wickle, wicked, <laughs> wicked, awful, dreadful. And, um, uh, so, so that, you know, Pastor Brian talked a, little, uh, a couple weeks ago about being unholy, about how we need to be holy, right? Right, so you don't want to be unholy. It's 
that, like I said, unholy is sinful and wicked or dreadful. And then starting in uh, verse 3, it says, Without um, this people without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now, we all know what incontinent means, but if you look it up, it just says having no control. It's lacking self-control. And, you know, and we see people like that today, right? Just people lacking self-control. And, um, and starting in verse 4, it says, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of, of pleasures more than the lovers of God. So lovers of pleasures, mean, that means anything you put in front, in front of the Lord. Because if, you're, if you love anything before you put before the Lord, no matter what it may be, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, you're, you're lover of those things, and those things aren't what, what changes you. Those things aren't what gets you through. Those things are not what sustains you. And, and we see that, you know, and we even see that in the church, you know. I mean, you, you even see that in people that, that claim to be Christians or com complain to be, uh, complain, <laughs> um, claim, thank you, that claim to be, you know, lovers of God, but, you know, they can't, they just put other things before God. And I don't want to use like any circumstances, but just anything that you put before God is, you know, the Bible says is an idol. And, you know, and that, that you know, the, the Ten Commandments says, I should not have any other gods before me. And, you know, an idol is a false god, right? Whether it be TV, whether it be, um, I don't know, um, I can't think of anything in the moment. But whatever it may be, may, you know, um, I don't just sleep. Thank you. <laughs> you know, or or whether it be I just don't feel like it. Whatever it is, when you put that before God, you know, God doesn't doesn't like that. He considers that an idol, and that's not good. And so we see that. You know, um, I, I saw a meme on Facebook, and this really kind of kind of spoke to me. And, but it, it showed. Uh, and you guys all might have seen it too. But it showed uh, this person, and he was in snow gear, head to toe, and he was, he had just snow all over him, and he was sitting in a football stadium in a football game, and, and it was, you know, you tell it was just cold, so he must have been up in the Packers or the Bears or something, I don't know, one of them awful teams, but he was, uh, <laughs> but anyway, he was sitting in the stands and just covered in snow, and it said, if the church, if the church would only be like this, what could we do, you know, and, you know, and, and that's true. You know, we get a sniffle or, you know, we get something better comes along and we put that before God. Okay, I'm going way off of where I'm wanting to go here. So, but anyway, um, so, and then um, uh, high-minded is, you know, people with full of pride, arrogance, and thinking that you know it all and thinking that you can't be taught anything else. And, you know, and sometimes we... We, as, as longtime Christians, as those that grew up in the church, um, you're like, well, I've heard that before. That doesn't pertain to me. You know, that's, that's but, but then that's, that's a form of being high-minded. And, I, you know, and I remember when I first came back to the Lord and, and uh, you know, I'd hear sermons. I'm like, oh, I've heard this before, you know, and I kind of tune it out. And, you know, and I remember something Pastor Ryan said a long, long time ago. Um, I remember we were at the, it, it, the old, old building. <laughs> so the, the one off of um, Lewis and, and Monroe. And he said, if you are in a service and somebody is speaking, there, no matter what the subject is, there is something God wants you to hear from that person. I don't care if that person's a snoozer. <laughs> you know, I don't care if you don't like how that person preaches or, or whatever. If God's put them by, behind the pulpit, there is something for you to glean from. And, you know, and like what Sister Deb leans from, it might be different than what Sister Scarlett leans from it. That's what's cool about the Rhema Word. It's, it fits that person, that time, and that moment. Okay, everybody following me here? I'm going to, I promise I'm, I'm leading up to something here. But, but you know, so, so don't ever tune somebody out just because, you know, I've heard them preach or, or I don't like them or I've heard that before because that's how you get you get deceived. That's how, you know, the enemy starts coming in. And, and I've shared with you before, there are many times I've read things in the Bible. I've read a verse or a scripture or whatever, and it'll hit me different. 
And you know, I'd be like, God, why did you put that in there? <laughs> you know, so don't don't be. I just I'm really really cautioning you guys. Don't be high minded. Don't think that you know it all, and there's not something that you can learn or you can glean from. Okay, so everybody with me there? Everybody, everybody getting this? Okay, and so, um, okay, and then verse 5, it says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, in the Passion Translation, verse 5 says, They that pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. And it says, stay away from people like these. Now, I'm going to bear with me here for a minute. We're going to go on a little bunny trail. But but if, if we come in every Sunday after Sunday and just learn and just learn, just like, you know, Reese with her math class or whatever just comes in and, you know, and you listen or whatever, you, you know, you're you're getting that knowledge. But if you don't apply it, if you don't allow it to change you, if you don't apply it to your life, then you're, you're denying the power of God's word. You're denying the power of him. And, you know, and God says stay away from those people. So if we're supposed to stay away from those people, we're not to be those people, you know, not just coming in and just, you know, just being here because you did your, your Sunday duty, you came to church. You know, you come to church to, to like I said, the reign of word is, is just, to, it's straight from the throne room. It's, it's for that time, that hour, for each and every person. But again, like I said, it just may hit different. You know, it, just, it depends on your walk, right? Because we're, we're all at different, different walks, you know. I mean, um, some are just beginning their walks or some are... Um, restarting their walks, or some have had been walking with God for a long time, and you know, and like Pastor Brian, I mean, his walk is is great. What a great example he is, you know, because he's he's God's put him through things and trials and things like that to to speak into our lives and to encourage us, right? So, um, so stay away from those. Don't be one of those people, and um, so. Verse uh, six and seven is is our main text. This is where I where um, my my sermon is coming from, and it says, starting in verse six, it says, "For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth." Okay, that's that's where that's where the meat of this whole sermon is ever learning, but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. And, you know, we don't want to be one of those that's just continuously learning and learning and learning and not doing anything with it. Have, how many of you guys, do you guys know anybody that seems like they've been in college forever? Yeah. <laughs> and, and just like continuously going to college and going to college, and they've done nothing with their life. Right. Nothing. I, I have a very good friend like that, and they're affected. And, um, and I love her dearly, but and she's one of the smartest people I know, but she has nothing to show for her life. And just continuously learning and learning, and unfortunately it's went on to her children. And, you know, it's just, and I'm talking in the natural, I'm not talking spiritually, but we're just continuously learning and haven't applied it anywhere. We don't want to be those people. You know, we, we, I know I keep repeating it, but I, I just want you guys to get it. We want to come in. We want to learn. And we want the word that's being spoken to change our lives. Because what are we supposed to do when, when we get filled up in the house? What are we supposed to do? Yeah. Take it outside. Right. So if you haven't, if, when you hear the word and you haven't applied it to your life and, you know, and, and walked it out, how are you going to give it to somebody else? You know, and, and that's why it says, "Don't just be hearers of the word; be doers of the word." And I think I, I think I have that verse that we're going to look at. And um, so, and it says in verse eight, it says, "Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall manifest unto all men as theirs also was." Now, Janus and Jam Jamers, I hope I'm pronouncing those right. I'm probably not. But this is the only time you, you hear them in the Bible. They're, they're not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. But it is believed to be the magicians that, that Moses um, 
that came against Moses when Moses was with Pharaoh and he was doing all the um, the the miracles with his staff, you know, like when he when his staff turned into serpents and things. These they're believe Janet Janice and this other guy um, are believe <laughs> that's real biblical and <laughs> this other guy. But they were believed to be the magicians. And they're like, well, you know, look, I can do this too. You know, like what and, and of course they were doing it through different spirits. But but like it says, you know, they shall go no further. You know, everybody will see through them. Every, you know, God will, will point them out and God will expose them. And we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be people that that just hear and mimic. But when the rubber meets the road, nothing comes through. It just ends right there. And, you know, and again, so that's my challenge to you. And, um, but it does talk in Exodus chapter 8 about, um, the magicians that, that mimicked Moses with the plagues. Um, let's go to, to verse 10. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, um, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. It, with persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, this is Paul talking, and, and he's, he's talking. Uh, to Timothy and the churches and things like that. And he's saying, you know, um, he's saying, you know, look, look at what you have followed me as I've went through all of this, as I've suffered all of this. And um, in, uh, hold on, I lost my verse. I apologize. I couldn't make my font any bigger. So, <laughs> um, but in, um, I lost I apologize. I lost my scripture here. Anyway, um, yes, there it is. I apologize. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one, Paul says, "Be ye followers of me, as I follow Christ." And you know, and that's Pastor Brian. Pastor Brian teaches us, and Pastor Brian disciples us, and you know, and we are to follow him as. He follows Christ because he is the shepherd of the house, correct? Yes. yes. And so, you know, and God flows through that shepherd. And, you know, and, and we, I talked a while back about a shepherd. A shepherd is somebody that that you allow to guide you and lead you and speak into your life. And, you know, and, and we, we uh, you know, so, uh, Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. And, you know, so we fully surrender and we fully uh, let that person guide us. And, you know, as, and it goes down in the body, you know, Jesus is the head, Pastor Brian is the head of this house. And so as Sundays come along and Wednesdays and teachings and classes and whatever they are, we need to be soaking every bit of that up. And, and then it's one thing to soak it up, but we've got to put it into action because soaking it up is not going to do it. It's not going to, you know, just not putting it into action, not applying it to your life, not um, putting any any effort into it is not going to help you when, when your whole world's upside down, right? And we talk about faith. Faith is a muscle, right? Faith, you know, you have to work your faith from glory to glory to glory. And, and you have to work it. And it's hard. It's it's hard. And, you, and Pastor Brian's talked about working out before. I've been under the Pastor Brian boot camp. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but, um, but, but, it, but it works. You know, you put all that into it, you know, to build your muscles. And it works. But what happens when you stop? What happens when you stop building your muscles? It, they just go away. Or they turn into fat, <laughs> and, which is where I'm at. But anyway, but so so you have to keep continuing, continuously working that word, applying it to your life, just continuously doing it, not just sitting in and just just getting educated. You know, there's a difference between getting educated and getting educated. <laughs> you know, there's a getting educated just to listen, but getting educated to do something with it. And, you know, how many of you guys would want a doctor that just sat in class and, oh, I don't need to know this, you know? No. I mean, no. 
you know, or, you know, a surgeon, you know, <laughs> you want somebody that's really went into it, that's applied what he's learned and practiced what he's learned. You know, you want somebody like that, right? The world needs somebody like that. The world needs to see Christians that have come in, that have learned and, and been taught and applied it. And that way they can go out and show them how to do things and to show them they can overcome, show them that God loves them and be like, hey, you know, God was here for me in this. And, you know, and he's no respect of our persons. He can be there for you for this. Right. You know, and and um, like with Bonnie and Kevin, you know, with their tithes and offerings, you know, you can't talk them out of paying their tithes and offerings because and, and myself and others. But we pick on you all the time. <laughs> But, but they applied it. And, and I mean, they'll tell you, you know, like, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and everybody would say, you know, they used to say they couldn't afford to pay their tithes. And now they say they can't afford not to pay their tithes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and so, so and, and I'm sure they've shared that with many, many a people. And, you know, and I, I, not to make it about me, but I get told a lot that, you know, because a lot of you know my story and the things that me and my family have been through. And over several years, and I always get told, oh, you're such a strong person. No, I'm not. If I did that all in my own strength, I wouldn't have made it. I mean, you know, I I would have just crumbled up into a pile of right. goo. And, you know, and but, but before all that hit, there were things that I had to go through and apply in my life to strengthen my faith. And I, and I could tell you each one of them. I could tell you. And I, like, okay, I'll make it. Um, back when, um, way back when, way back when, but um, there was, uh, um, I had got, we're learning about uh, words of knowledge and wisdom, right? And uh, so I got a word of knowledge is the future, right? Is that right? No, wisdom. Wisdom is the future, sorry. <laughs> but I got a word of wisdom. And I was, I uh, had a dream, and I, uh, let me back up a little bit more, I'm sorry. Um, when Darren and I, when we decided we wanted to start having children, we decided right away, because we got married when we were older. And uh, so we decided we wanted to start a family right away. And we had trouble getting Reese. So we went to a doctor and went through all that fun stuff. And, you know, here, here come Reese. And uh, I had a horrible pregnancy. I, you know, I was in the hospital for several, several months. Uh, she, most of my pregnancy, and she was born early. She was born eight weeks early and healthy, strong, everything. But they told me, do not do this again. Because <laughs> they're like, you won't make it. And, and they said that, you know, and the baby might, you know, not make it either. But they're like, you know, pregnancy is hard on your body. Well, as every mom knows, you know, you have a baby, you're like, okay, great, I'm not doing that again. And, you know, they get to a certain age, and you're like, oh, I, I want another baby. <laughs> so here I started. Karen's like, <laughs> but anyway, but we, we both got on the same page, and we, you know, we two becomes one, so your desires become, you know, the same. And so um, so I had a dream, and it said I was in church, and Pastor Brian was there, everybody, you know, that was in church at the time was there, my parents, Darren's parents, everybody was there. And they were like, testify, tell everybody what God said, tell everybody what God told you. And so I said, God said, my son, our son is on the way. And so I woke up and I'm, you know, and I'm just kind of like, you know, and I'm like, God, is that you speaking to me? So of course I went to my pastor and got counseling. And he says, yes, very much so that, you know, your son is coming. And so I'm like, great. So here I'm thinking, okay, any day now. <laughs> and do you know Hunter did not come for another two and a half years? Whoa. And I had to, and, and there were things that I, that Darren and I had to walk through as a couple because that was that was the first trying faith moment for me. And I had to apply everything that I learned to poor Pastor Brian. <laughs> he had to help me through it. But I had to apply every everything I ever knew about faith, walking in faith, you know, knowing that God's word doesn't return void. I had to apply every bit of that. And um, and to make matters worse, everyone I knew were ha was having babies. And people that shouldn't be having babies were having babies. And my very best friend, she, uh, 
her kids were way older, and unfortunately, her husband and her were going through a very, very rough time, and it looked like they were. <laughs> and uh, she's like, surprise! <laughs> and I'm like, God! <laughs> but, you know, and there are many temptations to go to the doctor and go seek help, just like we did with Reese. But I'm like, no, because I got to trust God and I got to walk this out. And so I did. And, you know, and obviously Hunter came along. And, and then I had to walk in faith to believe that the pregnancy was going to be perfect, that I wasn't going to get sick and nothing was going to happen. And we, I had a very healthy, healthy pregnancy. It was great. And th so, so there's battle number one, right? Had to walk through that. You know, and Darren had to walk through that. We walked through that as a family. And, um, and then the, the, uh, right after Hunter was born, one week later, we are in the hospital and my son is dying. Because he caught pneumonia, his lungs had collapsed. And they're telling, they're telling me, I, we don't know if he's going to make it. And we were devastated because we're like, God, here, you know, we stood in faith and you said this child was coming. And we stood in faith. And then now we're looking at him dying. And again, I had to put that faith into action. Now, would I have been able to do that if I had just come into church and just listened and didn't allow that to shape me and mold me? And, and no, I would not. And obviously, Hunter's okay. You know, and of course, many of you, many of you sitting in here, help pray for Hunter. I mean, you guys... You know, we came together as a family, and we prayed, and we pulled him through, and, you know, Pastor Brian came in, and, and you know, he would lay hands on him, and we would talk to Hunter, you're going to live, and you're not going to die, and you're going to declare the works of the Lord, and he's a very healthy boy now. <laughs> but, but so, so those things, and God stood by me every step of the way, and, but, but again, I had to learn these things, and I had to apply them. And, and that's what I'm trying to encourage you guys to do. Don't think you know it all. Don't think you, you know, that you come in and whatever's being, being um, you know, spoke from the pulpit doesn't apply because it does. You just have to apply it to your life. You have to put it in there because it's for that time. And, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it about you but or me, but um, I just want to encourage you, you know, that, that those things, I mean, they're, they're, they're given at that time for a reason. Yes. And, you know, and, and so don't discredit what, what, um, what is being spoken every Sunday after Sunday. Because if it's the rain of word, where does the rain of word come from? God. So you're telling God, if we have that attitude, I'm not saying anybody here, I'm just, you know, if a person has that attitude, they're telling God, well, I don't, I know better. It's okay. <laughs> You know, I mean, think about it for a second. And I'm not saying anybody here is that way. I'm just, I'm just trying to get everybody to think. You know, because that, that spoke to me as well. You know, because sometimes, you know, you'll hear something you're like, oh, but, but I've had to tell myself, no, listen. And every time there's something I can glean from it, and something that I can, I can apply to my life. And um, so uh, now, when, when we think, so when we don't allow. Um, when we don't allow those things, when we hear those things and we don't apply them to our lives, that's when, like in verse 6 and 7, it talks about people can come in and can deceive you. And, you know, because you've just, you've got just a preset mindset of just what, how things are and how they're going to be, and that's how you get deceived. Okay, and we need to be careful of that because now this, this time frame now, it's, it is more easily to be deceived than anything. And, and it's from the simple things to the hard things. You know, I mean, there, there are things that, that I even catch myself kind of, you know, thinking a little bit different. Then I have to come back around like, no, no, that's not what the word says. And, you know, and so, um, so we have to be careful because you know, we don't want to get deceived. And Matthew 24, uh, verse 24, it says, you know, during that time, uh, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So it's very important that, that as you hear the word, you apply it. You stay in the word every single day. You have to read your word. You have to put it in because that's what that you're building your muscles, Right. You're building your faith muscles. You're building your word muscle. You're, you're building all that, and you have to stay into it. 
Because like when I start out, what you put into it is what you get out of it, right? Yeah. Yes, God is the God of mercy, but but He also wants us to grow up and to, you know, I, that's a lot of conversation that's happening in my house right now. I'm like, you're such and such years old, and you know, you're going to be an adult real soon, and you know, and these are things that you know you have to grow up. You have to start. You can't say I'm young anymore. You know, we can't say we're baby Christians anymore. You know, now if you're baby Christian, you're baby Christian. I, you know, I get that. You're you're still continuous growing, but I'm talking about more established ones. I mean, we can't we can't do that. We got to get off the milk and get into the meat, yeah. right? 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 Meat's good. <laughs> um, but uh, so so in verse 12, 2 Timothy chapter three, verse 12. It says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus uh, shall suffer persecution, but God can get us, God promises to get, get us through. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But, can, verse 14, here's the good stuff. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. So if you continue, that means you have to apply it, right? Yes. That means you can't just learn it. If you're continuing, it's got to continuously be working in your life and uh it's and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and in uh verse 14 it says but as for you continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed uh or i'm sorry this is in the english standard, standard version i'm sorry um it says uh firmly continue in things that you've learned and firmly believe knowing whom you you have learned it. And again, I already talked about every Sunday we get the rainbow word from Pastor Ryan. And, and we have to continue in it. We have to learn it. We have to apply it. And um, um, and then in James 1.22, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So when we don't apply it, when we just hear it and we don't apply it, we deceive ourselves. And, you know, and then that's a dangerous, dangerous place to be in. And so I'm, I'm just encouraging you. I'm giving you a challenge every time, you know, that you're in a service, whether it be here, wherever, it doesn't matter, whoever's speaking, I challenge you. God, what do you want me to hear from this? What, what do you want me to glean from this? And I promise you, he'll tell you. You know, even if it's, you know, somebody that's putting you to sleep or somebody you don't care for or, or I've been there, I've been there and, you know, but there's something that you can always learn. I, there's a friend that I worked with and she went to a different church and it was, it was a, a, um, a different uh, denomination. And so they had multiple pastors that preach from Sunday to Sunday that the, um, the, 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 the head pastor, lead pastor, senior pastor did not. Uh, preach every Sunday, and they would have Reverend so and so. You know, they just rotate. And she was like, "Oh, I hate it when this one guy comes. And he's just, he's so boring and he's awful." And and I just, I just tune him out. And I remember telling, and I told her what Pastor Brian told me about how, you know, you can't do that. You know, you have to, no matter, you know, what you don't like about him, and you know, you have to, you have. And God's put him in that position for a reason, right? Right? So if they're they're behind the pulpit, God has put them in that position. Because right, all authority comes from God. So so you know, so that's not a good place to be in either because you're telling God you know better too. But um, but anyway, so I told her that and I said, I encourage you the next time this pastor, you know, tune all that other stuff out and really concentrate on what he was saying. And she came back and she says, Oh Becky, you are so right. And she just went on about just the different things that she had learned. And it's just a mindset, you know, we, we, you know, we, we tend to be pleasers of ourselves. We want to be entertained. We want to, you know, there's churches like that. And that's not saying wrong or good or anything like that, but we have to see what God wants us to get out of it and to apply to our lives, not be entertained, not God, what can you do for all of me? What do you want me to do? And, um, and so, like I said, um, you know, we, we get filled up and, and we learn the, the rainbow word and we apply it so we can go out and give it to others. And Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So he's telling you, you know, learn them, then go out and teach them and teach others, you know, and make disciples. So again, if you just hear it and don't apply it, you can't go out and tell them, you know, and encourage them to come along. And um, and so going to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, um, and it says, And from a child thou hast known to the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And in verse 16, um, just to sum everything up, this verse sums everything up that I've been saying. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And verse 17, it says, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So right there, it's saying that all scripture and words spoken and, and through the ministers is to, it's all for, what was it again? I'm sorry, it's for, I want to get it right, I don't want to say it wrong, you know, for inspiration. It's for uh, doctrine, reproof, correction, nobody likes that one, and for instruction in righteousness. So so right there, it, it is a purpose. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, just just don't, don't hear don't, don't be greedy hearers. <laughs> be generous givers out. You know, apply it to your life and be generous out and ready to uh, to give an account for you know for what what uh, what you know and what you believe. The baby basic Bible doctrine class, I absolutely love it. Again, it's things I know. You know, it's things that I can give an account for. But I'm learning something new over every single lesson. Mm -hmm. And you know, so. I just want to encourage you, just just don't sit in here and just hear and hear and hear. You have to apply it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't remember what was spoken <laughs> after you walk out the door, mm -hmm. or even a week later, then we didn't apply it. And we didn't allow it to change our lives. Okay, so I hope that encourages you. And, and that spoke a lot to me as well. So, so I just want to encourage you because, you know, times are... Times are, we're looking in, in the dark times that we just read about. But the good news is, we got God on our side. You know, if God be for us, who can be against us? So, and, you know, and, and, and we, can, we can tell all the others in the world that are terrified and scared and don't know what to do. And they're looking, they're looking everywhere for, <coughs> for answers, for comfort. And how great would it be that we are there and be like, oh, I got the answer. What do you let me tell you about the answer. Let me tell you about how it'll just get you through absolutely everything you can possibly go through.